Good morning, all. My name is Ashley Alexis Magruder, and I am a senior here at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, double majoring in criminal justice and English. And today, I will present to you a topic regarding the future of Maryland's HBCUs. Historically Black colleges and universities, or HBCUs, have played an important role in enriching the lives of not just African Americans, but our entire country. That was a quote by Rick Keller. The Higher Education Act of 1965 defines an HBCU as a historically Black college or university that was established prior to 1964, whose mission principle was and is the education of Black Americans, and that is accredited by nationally recognized accredited agencies and associations determined by the National Secretary of Education to be a reliable authority as to the quality of training offered or is according to such an agency or association, making reasonable progress towards accreditation. HBCUs provide an array of opportunities to a diverse group of people, allowing them to develop new skills and talents. Unfortunately, ever since the establishment of HBCUs, there has been a perpetuating economic disparity regarding funding for campus activities, infrastructure, and programs. The extent of such funding discrepancy includes the state duplicating programs unique to various HBCUs and embedding them into the curricula, curriculum of PWI. Such acts increase enrollment and the level of prestige for PWIs, causing a mass decline in HBCUs enrollment. Specifically, Bowie State University Coppin State University, Morgan State University, and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore are among the HBCUs a part of the University System of Maryland who lacks an endowment suitable for enhancement. Moreover, the presentation of adequate funding can help cultivate the quality of programs and infrastructure, increase the number of scholarships rendered to students or among students, and heighten publicity for Maryland's HBCUs. I will now begin with my first reading regarding programs and infrastructure. The stemming economic deficit within the HBCU system has resulted in a decline in the quality and image of our institution. The presentation of adequate funding enhances the unique programs on campuses and infrastructure as it relates to the need for spacing to accommodate the programs. With the amount of funding allotted to predominantly white institutions in Maryland, it has allowed for students to receive higher quality programs that are both unique and innocuous to HBCUs. Now, according to Danielle Douglas Gabrielle, Maryland has underfunded MSU, CSU, BSU, and UMES, which has allowed for other schools to duplicate our programs, placing pressure on our enrollment. For example, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore is prominent for the criminal justice program. The unique focus at the university prepares students for a variety of disciplines in the criminal justice field. Now, although the program is well developed, the university lacks funding to secure stable internship partners and fellowships. Now, in the past years, Towson University emerged a sociology anthropology program, which integrates the concepts of anthropology, criminal justice, political science, philosophy, and sociology into their curriculum. With the amount of endorsements Towson received, they were able to develop the pathway called the Inside Out Prison Exchange, which allowed for students to study and apply criminal justice in the prison environment. The school also supplies students with an array of internship that partners with ACLU, the DJS, the state's attorney's office in Baltimore County, and many more. In reference to duplication, the level of development and array of disciplines within Towson's criminal justice program compared to UMES's program presents the essence of funding for academic growth. In light of this issue and many others, the equity lawsuit against the state of Maryland recently negotiated with the department's Office of Civil Rights to develop unique high-demand academic programs at HBCUs. This will endure any further instances of duplication the need for infrastructure to stabilize such programs and activities. As a result of fun I apologize, as a result of the funding deficit between Maryland's HBCUs and PWIs, infrastructure on the campuses of HBCUs in Maryland continue to deteriorate. Recently, 
alumni of historically black institutions have complained about the HBCUs and how they're competing with PWIs who have better finances and newer facilities. Such attributes of modernized infrastructure contribute to the images of PWIs as new facilities bolster the demands of their distinctive program. This factor heightens chances of enrollment for PWIs, causing a mass reduction in students attending HBCUs. Now I'll move on to my second point regarding scholarships and grants. Many students face difficulties attending school due to finances. Financial aid provides funding on the basis of merit and need. Adequate funding from the state and external sources will allow for the distribution of more scholarships and grants at HBCUs. Distribution of more financial aid can positively impact enrollment on HBCU campuses in Maryland. Scholarships for merit and academics. The University of Maryland College Park renders scholarships such as the Banneker Key Scholarship, the Dean Scholarship, the President Scholarship, the President's Transfer, Frederick Doug Douglass Scholarship, in addition to departmental awards, need-based awards, and many more. In comparison, Bowie State University offers a limited amount of scholarships ranging from the undergraduate scholarship, the transfer student scholarship, the graduate scholarship, honors program scholarship, the BSU Institutional, BSU National Alumni Association, BSU Associate of Arts in Teaching, and the Conroy Scholarship. Now, although they have a decent amount to offer throughout the academic year, they provide no resources for summer courses or unpaid internships. With the luxury of funding, UMD offers financial support for unpaid internships, including Bright Future Scholarships, BSOS Undergraduate Experience Scholarships, the Jeffrey A. McLean Foundation, the B.A. Rudolph Foundation, Federal Fellows, and Global Fellows. Additionally, they have a Work for Change internship collaboration, which renders $500 towards students who participate. Adequate funding will allow for many more students at Maryland's HBCUs to participate in unpaid internships without defraying the expenses that are accompanied with them. Athletics. State grants funding Maryland HBCU athletics will increase the number of athletes that enroll. The distribution of funding will provide the athletics department with more modernized equipment and gear vital for performance. With the required equipment, Maryland's HBCUs can cultivate their skill base in athletics, ultimately elevating their ranking in collegiate sports. Once they are awarded elite status, athletes will increase the amount of public, private, and nonprofit sponsorships, which can contribute to their improvement. I will now move on to my third and final point regarding publicity. Prominent educational institutions earn their status through the quality of their education. Specifically, University of Maryland College Park, Towson, and University of Baltimore are three of the best institutions in the state of Maryland, and that is primarily due to funding. The funding supports their programs, which gain publicity, increasing the number of endorsements that they receive. In relation to guest speakers, funding allows for UMD, Towson, and UB to hire notable guest speakers that supply students with insight and networks. In September 2012, the University of Baltimore had a guest appearance by UMD alumni Paula Keeger, who is the president and CEO of PBS, to discuss nonprofits and their profiting social enterprises. With funding for more notable appearances at Maryland's HBCUs, it will increase the public view and encourage more people to attend. Regarding in relation to recognition in the media and occupations, as funding is synonymous with an established name, to an established name, Maryland's HBCUs can receive more recognition in the media. Such media exposure will cause enrollment rates to skyrocket, which can generate more funding. Additionally, when discussing occupations, campus recruiters will recognize us on their applications. Now, recently, while I was applying for an internship position in the notable technology company and government agency, I noticed that UMES's name was not listed. An established name in the media will allow for inclusiveness of all Maryland colleges and universities on applications. In closing, notwithstanding the negative effects of the economic disparity between PWIs and HBCUs, the presentation of adequate funding can cultivate the quality of Maryland's HBCUs. Initiatives taken to combat 
such an extensive issue can be remedial for HBCUs. The remedies can propose new opportunities for HBCUs to revive current students, alumni, and stakeholders. As Judge Catherine Blake stated, successful execution of this remedy will necessitate the appointment of a special master or administrator to further develop a plan to eliminate racial disparities between HBCUs and traditionally white institutions in collaboration with all parties to the lawsuit. As we, current students, alumni, faculty, staff, and advocates for HBCUs coalesce in support of economic equality, we are bound to reflect improvements in Maryland's HBCUs for the futures to come. As former President Obama had once stated, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. And that concludes my speech. So I would just love to thank everyone who sat in on my speech, and I really do hope that my perspective on the future of Maryland's HBCUs was extremely resourceful, and I definitely do look forward to providing you all with more information for the future to come. So thank you once again, and I'll see you next time.